The silent picture people had a very hard job. Emotion without words. They came through with flying colors. For me, silent film reaches a kind of dream state. It has a quality somewhere between what we know as our everyday experience as contemporary sentient beings and sort of these um, archetypes of characters and conflicts that we understand through mythology. Silent movies matter so much today, but just because there's sort of this stigma about, ooh, I'm not sure if I want to watch that, it's sort of daunting sometimes, but it's an irrational fear. What's fascinating about silent film, it records a part of our culture that existed actually during a relatively short window of time from 100 years ago. The best of the silent films are great works of art. They are the value of a time machine in showing you exactly what people look like, what the streets look like, how they behave to each other, and attitudes. There's something about being able to see people move in space and in relation to each other and interact with their environment and the way that they wear their clothes, the way people walk. Chaplin's Modern Times gets at this, the mechanized life that millions of people were living during this period. The crowd has an amazing opening montage of New York, which shows New York in 1928, pre the Empire State Building, which is a New York we don't always think about perfectly shows this city in a historic moment in time that is now gone. Adults kept saying, oh, stay away from silence. They're so badly made, and the photography is awful. And as for the acting, you just laugh at it. And it was so wrong. There's also sort of this misconception that before Tagus came in, everything was sped up, blurry, and you can't understand it. It's sort of this outdated medium, like a cave painting, far from it. In fact, there's something about those constraints that actually forces artists during that period to be open and creative in the ways that they approach storytelling. There's a specific aesthetic that those filmmakers were developing, and some of them did so in really remarkable ways. Silent film performance, there's a spectrum of types of performance. There's certainly dramatic performance, conveying emotion and not having the capacity to use one's voice means that you have to go to a different set of tools. Gesture and facial expression. I love Greta Garbo. She is a genius when it comes to the use of her face and understanding where the camera is and how the lighting is working. She's a figure that really helps us to understand, especially where female performers are concerned, that actors are not simply objects that the directors are kind of molding, but instead they are co-creators of their image. There's that remarkable scene in Flesh and the Devil where uh, she's seducing John Gilbert in the garden and just every movement of her eyelashes and her mouth and the way she's lit is so carefully crafted. The eyes can say way more than words and when you don't have words, the eyes Hold it all, and that can go right to the soul. And I feel like a lot of talkies, even films now, they miss that very important element, but the silent film's mastered almost every time. Comic performers, people like Chaplin or Buster Keaton, they're taking incredible risks. If I was gonna show or introduce silent films to a friend of mine, I'd probably show Safety Last. It's just as funny and frightening as it was back then, but People have such low expectations most of the time for some of these films, they don't expect to be moved the way they are. The Buster Keaton films are, are spectacular, and that was just a, a master at work. I remember seeing one week in particular in which the newlyweds' house is spinning around and around. And there was a kid who was in the front row, and he started laughing. And he started laughing so hard and so hysterically that everyone started looking at the kid who was really just engaged with the film. It had hit him at such a visceral level. It was such an inspiring vision. F.W. Murnau's film, Sunrise, it's a spectacular film in so many ways. And I think it breaks a lot of our assumptions about what silent filmmaking is about. There are very few inner titles in that film. The story, the acting, really carries the film. Extended 
sequences. Murnau, King Vidor, they were doing for the eyes what Beatles were doing in the 60s for the ears. Totally just like, how did they do that? And it's just extraordinarily beautiful. King Vidor was the first silent film director I ever met. He was very self-deprecating, but tremendous confidence. He said, I didn't say much as a director, and I had John Gilbert in front of me, and I, all I had to do was to think it. It was like a love affair, he said. Seeing a film that was premiered 100 years ago, that is a mind-boggling experience, and a beautiful one. There is a, a sense that you're communicating with another time, and in some ways, a lost time, a time that is no longer available to us. Silent movies are the origins of filmmaking. If you want to understand rock and roll, you have to understand the blues. What really captivates people still is strong story and sympathetic characters. And all of those things are visible in silent films.